Welcome to another episode of Behind the Studs, your home improvement and remodeling podcast, where the two most entertaining guys discuss the do's and don'ts in home construction and in the remodeling industry. Remember that you can nail it, paint it, or just tune into the show. How about that? Uh, Here are your hosts, Colin Shaw and Jimmy Driscoll. Hello, hello. (laughs) Welcome. (laughs) Behind the Studs. How are we doing, Jimmy? Uh, I got to change it up a little bit for you. You're getting you're getting too used to my intro. I know. Well, so, anyway, yeah, so it's anyway. autumn. It's the time of season when you leave your toolbox open and you walk away with the forest <laughs> and your freaking toolbox tray. See, that's a tip that the uh, that the customer's given you. No, no charge. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah. the whirly birds everywhere. Yeah. Go start your truck up in the morning. Get leaves stuck in your windshield. <laughs> like, uh, where did this cold come from? We yeah. went from ninety degrees, <sighs> and then we're going back humidity. up into the seventies. When this weekend? Yeah, no, this week. So we back really? up to like the mid seventies, no and then this weekend psh, down to like the fifties. No, That's the thing I hate about this area, you know. Like just just do gradual. And they say we need to be extreme. And, and it's so funny. It says no rain for the whole week. Yep. No rain for the whole week. So Liar. I got all my tools in the bag on a truck, Liar. and I got a downpour. Yeah, <laughs> pouring yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. Yesterday was bad. And yeah. they're laughing at me. He's <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> Like one of my guys says, he's like, the first raindrop hits me on the forehead. The second one's in, on the uh, windshield of my truck. <laughs> so it means he's going to get out of there. Oh, I had a buddy. He's like, yeah, I don't blame you, man. Daddy don't work in the rain. <laughs> Daddy don't work in the rain. I'm like brown sugar. I melt. Yeah, exactly. Done. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Enough about us. Above, enough about you. Enough about me. Yes. Yes. We have a guest with us today. Who we are not worthy to talk to. Absolutely not. Absolutely no. not. But we're going to give it a shot and see how long he... Puts yeah. up with our dumb dumb. Put up your freaking. <laughs> I am like uh, I am just like I if if I could be on both my knees just worshiping this dude, <laughs> I would because I got I got questions, man. Oh God, I know he's got questions. answers. Yeah, and I know what it's going to be. It's just because it doesn't work for you because you're stupid. That's all he's gonna tell <laughs> he seems much nicer than that. Oh, he is. Yeah, he is. Gonna, he'll say it with a smile on his face. So we have Master Craftsman Ronald Layman with us. Say, hey, Ron, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? Uh, doing great. We're thank doing you. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks really for being it. on the show. Really, man. Really. Awesome. Hey, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. So I've been on the website and I've seen some of your work, but let's start off in the, uh, you know, kind of the history of, of everything, which I think is kind of cool too. I, you know, read up on that uh, on your website. So kind of give us the background, how all this started, when it started and uh, what it is you do. Yeah. Well, as far as back as we've taken it so far, uh, my great grandfather started painting barns in 1890. Isn't that crazy? Uh, by kind of by accident. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. No, he started out painting barns uh, because back then in this area where I'm at, uh, just outside, I'm in mean, Frederick, Maryland, uh, to find someone to paint a barn in 1890 was really difficult. So he was a farmer and just started painting barns. And then the next thing, the neighbor asked him to paint a barn, paint a barn. Then he learned how to do some stenciling, some wallpaper, and some vinegar graining, which is a st- old time or a historic style of imitation wood graining. Um, he had a daughter, which was my grandmother. She met a young man. He needed a job, gave him a job. That was my grandfather. Mm-hmm. He learned a little bit. He ended up leaving my great grandfather's business for a while and went to work at a company in Baltimore called Puff and Shoe, which no longer exists, but at the time was the largest painting and decorating company on the East Coast. Wow. They actually had their own farms where they grew the trees because back then scaffolding was made of wood. Yep. And he got uh, down in Mount Baltimore, Annapolis area. We always had what they called the Greek painters, which actually did a lot of wood graining, marbling and high end finishes. Um, Along comes my dad. He sees some of this as a youngster. My grandfather starts his own business and so on and so on. Wow. And now uh, here you are. Yeah, it took me a while. My dad wouldn't let me touch a paintbrush for about two years. Really? That's funny. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I I was scraping, sanding, sweeping. When I finally touched the paintbrush for the first time, I was allowed to cut in a closet. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the way it is. My father would just said, hold the light. But dad, (laughs) hold the light on it, on it. It's like, didn't you learn anything from your father? Yeah, I learned how to get yelled at. Yeah, I learned how to get yelled at. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what, what's your what's your specialty carpentry? I go lighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's basically. I can light that for you. Yeah, light it up for you real good. So, how old were you when you first started? That's a tough one because I see now my father was also a marine during the Vietnam period. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, so, if I wasn't going to school or had plans on the weekends or summertime, 
uh, I was told when he got into the shower uh, that if my rear end wasn't out of that bed finding something to do, uh, he would mm -hmm. flip me out of my bunk and I'd be out working. So Jeez. most likely, actually, yeah. Um, actually, there's a picture that goes back when they were painting a kitchen for my grandparents and I'm wearing an old paint cap and no coveralls. And I was probably about three in that photo. Oh, wow. Um, but middle school, I would say, is when I actually started going out in the summertime working with them. Okay. And it wasn't mm. something I wasn't something I wanted to do. <laughs> really? That's interesting. Yeah. What what did you just yeah. do it because it's a family thing or well actually I went to college for a little while to study some uh you know business management administration things like that. Um and then it was kind of one of those things where my father and I worked together but we started to butt heads because I was a you know kind of thought I knew it all at that point. <laughs> right. Um and he's like, oh, he, he, and also he didn't want to build a, a big business. Um, he wanted to stay small. And at the time, you know, I wanted a bigger company. I was really big into like Michael Gerber and the E-Myth, you know, how to build systems, to build big business that runs itself without you. And I guess we trudged along for a few years and we had a building moratorium here. And then we had the, a recession when Bush was president and that killed mm -hmm. my business. Sure. And, mm -hmm. yeah, and where my business was located then, my neighbor had a plastering and stucco company, knocked on the door. He's like, hey, I got to set up blueprints for a casino. And it says they want some Fox painting. And I think you know how to do that. Sure enough, I said, yep, I know. Went down, looked at it, uh, got my first casino project and realized I didn't need to have 20 guys working for me anymore. Mm -hmm. That with myself and a helper, we can make just as much money. Wow. Or even more. Yeah, right. At, you know? Yeah. yeah. And less hassles and headaches, and everyone's got no drama. You know? Yeah, I'm not a babysitter anymore. Right, I, I, it's, it's nice to go to work and not have to deal with the uh, the nonsense. Yeah, know, right. Unfortunately, yeah. Now, have you grown the business since then, or? Well, I started teaching classes. So when I was funny, when I was on that casino project, all the painters and wallpapers that were there from other companies were asking me, you know, what where did I learn to do this? Whatever, teach them and. I didn't think anything of it because at the time I was pretty young. I was uh, 30. Okay. Um, so I started started doing some weekend classes and then I had a, stu had a studio in Maryland and Florida. And be by teaching classes, all I have to do is send out an email and I can get people to come and work for me no matter what size project I have. So no matter where I'm going. So that's what's kind of nice. So, yeah, we're I mean, we have I, three full time people, with, including myself. Okay. Um, but it's nice. You can control the quality and with the finishes, like the type of work, like the stuff in front of me, behind me. Yeah. yeah. You just can't find, they don't, there's not too many people running around and hunting that. Nope. No. We nope. know that for a fact. Right. Right. Wow. Preach that's, that's, that's very interesting. Huh. Yeah. All right. Where that do you want to start? Good. I'm going to start right now. <laughs> Heads All up. Right. Okay. Heads up, Rod. <laughs> You're looking at, I'll be dope number one. It's going to be dope number two. All right. <laughs> All right, we're gonna lay this right out on the table. Here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Plastering. Oh. All right. I've seen it done. I was in the Union Carpenter. We had there were plasterers from Rhode Island that were doing some amazing work down at Pfizer and stuff like that. I saw that and watched that. And then we were working together. We had a plaster wall, and we basically almost became alcoholics <laughs> after that and mass murderers. Yeah. Because we did everything freaking right. We got a nice, clean pail, mm -hmm. nice, clean water, cold mm -hmm. water, cool, mm -hmm. nice, clean tools. Put the water in that we have to do. We mix the plaster, get one swipe, and then it's current hard as a rock. What are we doing wrong? I mean, we followed the not directions working. on the back. Yeah. And nothing. I mean, I don't think I'm a stupid guy, but. <laughs> well, we are. It's, we are. When we're it comes dopes. To that. <laughs> it, it, with plaster, it's all about hustling. You got to go. I mean, we can put like a an extender or sometimes referred to as a retarder and to slow it down a little bit, but you have a small, small window. That's why we mix up. We have a couple guys mixing a couple guys putting it on. Um, and when you make plaster moldings, it's even worse. No, you know what? We're, well, we're definitely not plasterers at all <laughs> because we, well, he said he tough. could teach us. You're going to have, Oh yeah. <laughs> no skill required. We, we'll pay you big bucks. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> I like teaching people that don't have a background in like painting and drywall because they don't bring any bad habits to the table. They're, you know, they're ready to go. Like, True. There's well, nothing wrong with drywall. I'll, I'll tell you right now, there is no habit with me and, <laughs> or him. We are, we are magoos, morons, whatever you want to say. You're looking at a blank slate right here. 
Duh. Put it there. <laughs> yeah. What? Do what? Yeah. What? This? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You have no question from us. Yeah. Yep. If we have to stand on our heads to learn how to mix it, we'll do that. So what you're saying is do small batches. Yeah. I mean, we have one guy always mixing. Yeah. Another guy bringing it to the hall. And then you're just running it up the wall and going with it. Wow. And you got to work yeah. fast because it sets really quick. It does. Yeah, I mean, well, it's with the plaster, right? traditional plaster. I mean, we use the gauging plaster to build up the thickness. And then we use a white coat. I don't know what you were using. Some, a lot of guys would use plaster of Paris, thinking yes, that that's, that's the right thing. Yep. Yeah, that's the, that's the wrong thing. Uh -huh. ah, there you go. Because <laughs> that's all we could get. When you ask for plaster, that's all they give you is plaster of Paris yeah. around yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, that's you got to go to a special. Yeah, specialty yard. Like around here, we have um, Capital Supply, which is pretty big. And you'll get what sometimes referred to as white coat or diamond coat. Hmm. So that gives you a lot. Compared to plaster of Paris, you have a lot more time to work. No, you have no time to work with plaster of Paris. No. It's like fill a hole. Bang, done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to put your knife yeah. back in the bucket. That's it's, it. like, it's done. Clank, That's clank. it. You're done. <laughs> Hop, pull, pull, pull. Nice. Look, it yeah. consistent. Nice and creamy. Hop, <laughs> one swipe. Next one. <laughs> Turt. Turt. Like, yeah. what? 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 Uh. I know. So, yeah, if you so sneeze, it's going to dry. It is. Right, it's done. Exactly. You think exactly. about it, it's done. <laughs> it's dry before I even thought about it, if it's yeah. going to dry. But let me ask you um, how much time do you have working time with Plast when you're working with the diamond cut or whatever you, whatever you say, whatever one, which one? How much time you got? If I made a small batch, well, say I made up like two quarts, how much time I got? Oh, uh, I mean, 20 minutes. So, mm. uh, probably. Yeah, we had two seconds. Like, like, <laughs> we're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just, we were on, I have a customer now that we go, like, I'm, I'm doing work for again, but we were on her house originally for three years. Um, wow. Pretty much continuous doing the plaster and the ceilings in that house were 14 foot high. So mm. we had to build a uh, dance floor. So the dance floors, we take scaffolding and build the, bring the floor up. So you can right. reach the ceiling and that trouble. Yeah. And on, like on there, we, we just brought the walls down halfway, took it out the dance floor, and we brought it the plaster up into the, what we already did. Yeah. And there was no, it was seamless. I mean, visually you could see it, but when you touched it, it was smooth as a piece of glass. Right. Wow. That's, that's the really beautiful thing about plaster. Oh, yeah. My, my house was built in the late 1700s, and it's failing miserably. Um, so it's just like, so I'm trying to skim coat it with just, you know, drywall and stuff like it's it's just so bad it's like i think i'm just going to cover it with quarter inch sheetrock mm. you know and and i just because it's just old it's just you work upstairs and then downstairs you got you got your cracks you know it's it's not really forgiving at all right. so um yeah but, i have a couple houses starting up first of the year for another for the same client they're all plastered what happens is you get all that spider web cracking yep um you know you take a hammer and tap on the wall and listen for the hollow spots yeah, and then any when it's hollow, you just remove that. We'll chase the crack, blow it out, and we'll patch it. You can even patch that with plaster of Paris because it sets pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but then we'll mesh the whole wall with a piece of fiberglass mesh, very thin. Yeah. That locks all the spider webs down, and then you can skim right over it. Right. It's oh, gone. interesting. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I've done basically that, and I did that on the ceiling with the wide, wide with the wide mesh. I've done the best that I can. It is what it is, and that's it mm -hmm. for now. You know. Um, but that's, that's something. Do you ever work with that easy sand, which is, which is yeah, a all the time. Water, water base. Now they got the five yeah. minute easy sand, which is hilarious. Yeah. I think that's hilarious. Yeah. That's back to the, uh, the yeah, as soon as you open yeah. it up, it's hard. <laughs> right. Just open it up. You know, just, just throw yeah. it at the wall. It's done. That's easy so sand funny. is one of those things. I'll, I'll never understand the math because five dries in 10, 10 dries yeah. in 20, 20 dries in 40 and 40 yep. dries in 80 minutes. I'm like, why can't we just call it 10 if it dries in 10? <laughs> right. I'm with you on that one. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's, it I mean, it's dry. It's, but it's like, you can, you can still work it with a sponge if you need to feather it in. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not crazy about the consist consistency when I'm done with it. You know, it's not like the regular, the buckets, you know, whether where you buy, you know, UGL or if you buy um, whatever that's out there now. Um, I'm not crazy about the, the consistency of a, a, the, the final product with it, you know? Um, yeah, I, it's, we use it more for patching. And, yeah. Um, if, yeah exactly. Let's say if we're going to skim, if we're going to skim a wall with joint compound, yeah. we might, we'll sometimes add some of the easy sand in to accelerate the dry time. 
Um, oh, but yeah, I don't that. like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, it'll accelerate. Mud. You can actually buy accelerants for joint compound, but that works just as well. And it's a little less expensive. Jeez, I have. And you can find it. Even when, even during COVID, when compound was getting really short, they had the green buckets. I'm like, mm -hmm. nope, mm -hmm. I'm not even touching that anymore. It's so freaking heavy, so dense, it and it's just, it, is. it shrinks and it's, yeah, that's a really, really, and really there's just so many shortener. different color lids out there now. Yeah. And there's black and red and <laughs> green. You can't, you can't and get red. Blue. And you I'm can't like, can't get red oh. up here at all. The no? red top. Can't yeah. Get it all. It's been, they've been out for over six months with it. Wow. You can't even look to see it. Black top, the same thing. Is wow. that the top? Is red lid topping compounds? Is that what that is? Yeah. It's your, it's your finished coat. Yes. Um, yeah, we I haven't seen that around here. We can get that in boxes, but not pails. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Same thing. Isn't it weird down there where you are? Like the things that you can't get, you know, things that just like just just don't you can't get it. You can't get to certain mm -hmm. materials. We have the same problem up here. Yeah, we uh, have a small paint factory here called McCormick Paints. It's a regional company. Yeah. And I was in the other day just needed because when I do my uh, wood graining or marble finishes, we always get empty cork cans and. We mix up, like, I mix up the colorants here, make sure everything's right, take it to the job site. I wanted to get some cork cans, and they're like, we don't have any. We don't know when they're coming in. Wow. Yeah. The residents and everything they else. Can't get, can't get, uh, uh, they can't get pretty paintbrushes here. Really? really? Huh. Yep, I'm not getting them at all. Yeah, sure, Williams wow. has them. Want me to send you some? I'll get you some. I'll send you some. <laughs> what do you need? <laughs> we'll talk about it after the show. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we've come to. We're, we're doing I'll, back I'll send, here. I'll send right. you guys. Hey, <laughs> right. listen, yeah. you come up here and you plaster a Paris for me, I get you a couple brushes. <laughs> well, I will bother this. Wow, year. what a deal. What are you here for? I'm <laughs> here for the brushes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you in. I guess explain that to the police officer in the parking lot. <laughs> right? right? <laughs> Falling out you of your guys doing drugs? Brush? No, what pretty brushes. No, pretty brushes. <laughs> yeah, sure you are. Yeah. No, really. I got four inch, two inch sash. Yeah. <laughs> hey, got in a little cheetah brush? Yeah. Little, the short stubbies? I'll yeah. take one of those. <laughs> Let me ask you what is the favorite thing that you like to do? What is your favorite? Oh. It kind of de it really depends. Uh, it's That's a tough question. I mean, it really is tough. Because I've been on the house I'm at right now doing a, uh, like, I don't want to say a skip job, but a textured plaster technique with a patina over top of it. It's fun, but I've been there for about five months and uh, mm -hmm. probably got about three, three more to go. Um, so I'm taking a little break and I've got a ceiling to do with uh, clouds and atmosphere. So clouds are one of my favorites because I don't get a lot of them. And when I do, I kind of geek out a little bit and put a lot into it. Mm, cool. It's just but it's fun but i mean i just did a door for a customer he drove two hours to bring me a what is it a masonite door masonite i think it was masonite builder mm -hmm. grade and um had to skim out the texture and i did it to look like cuban feather mahogany and it, you know it's just one of those things i don't know what i'm i know what i'm doing from week to week month to month but when it changes up and you get something you haven't done for a while that you're super passionate about yeah you, you just have so much fun with it awesome wow yeah. Jeez, I wish I had that. Oh my God, this is awesome. <laughs> Go to the dump today. I'm so excited. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So, That's oh. why we're not master craftsmen. Master craft. Yeah. <laughs> That's something. Yeah. I just I like I go by the term painter. The people that built the website did that. And I, ah, okay. I don't like that. Okay. I actually have friends over in Europe that have their master papers, and that's a process unto its own. And mm -hmm. we can never I can never get that being born here in the United States. So, okay. I, yeah. But no, it's fun. Like, man, I mean, I just had a customer today call me. I'm going to be out in Montana in March doing, uh, uh, what do you call it? Quarter sawn oak um, that was done in a house in 1870. Wow. Um, somebody came in and painted over it and they thought it was real oak and they stripped mm. it. It's gone. So, mm. so what are you going to do? Revitalize it's, it? Uh, well, no, it was never real oak to begin with. It was painted to look like oak. Oh. Uh, painted. Yeah, so she called me up uh, about a week ago, and they sent me pictures, and we revisited. So I'll be out there for about two, two to three weeks, is what it sounds like doing that. And that's fun because you just don't get. And that's honest. That's why I document a lot of stuff for social media. I have a, I put a lot of it on YouTube because I, I, yep. I want to get young. I don't have any children, and I want to get young people inspired to do this and oh, continue to do this. Good luck, dude. Yeah, good luck. I, it's I, tough. I, it, it's tough. I don't mean to be sarcastic about it. But we are finding that everywhere in the in the United States, it's just like the the workforce is like gone. Mm -hmm. Honest to God, it's gone. Um, you can't. 
just trying to get somebody to come in and just, you know, even apprenticeship, you know, I, I really, I give you my blessing and I, and I hope the best that you can find those people that just get so jazzed about what you do. I, I know they're out there, but they're so hard to find, you know, um, like for us, anyways, yeah. for us, it's like, it's, it's nuts up here, you know? So yeah, um, it's, well, it's that way everywhere. If I was doing traditional house painting, I wouldn't be able to find any help at all. And unfortunately that's a market here that's gone by the wayside. Hmm. It's over. It's so competitive. It, it's there's, and unfortunately there's no money in it anymore. Mm-hmm. It's people, you know, little guys will paint a room for 200, $300. And it's like, I, I that doesn't interest me. Right. Hmm. Well, you're into the design and the art of it, you know, which is, and you're blessed that you can go out there and do that, get flown out or fly out or drive out, do whatever you can do and make it, make the magic happen. That, I think that is just awesome. You know, you found your your niche. So that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. It took them, it took a while. I mean, but yeah, YouTube has been a big thing for me. I mean, uh, five years ago, I kind of started playing around with it in the last year and a half, two years. We got really serious about it, learning how to, work all the ins and outs and the back end of it. And um, we did the math about, I guess it was a month ago, we finally broke a million, 1.5 million views. Wow. And yeah, we did the math. So as of right now, before we uploaded the last batch of videos, you get about 42 views every minute. Wow. From all over the world. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and I actually got a young man coming in in about two weeks. He's gonna come down from, I think New Jersey. Um, he wants to learn. He's like, I, you don't have to pay me a dime. I will labor for you. I just want to learn. Man, so, very cool. Yeah, I'm gonna. We're gonna put him up, feed him, and give him a little bit of money. But he just wants. <laughs> to, that's, that's what I like about it. Yeah, yeah, that's something. That's a that's a diamond in the rough. Yeah, that's, that's great. Really good. Yeah, this past summer I brought on a kid, a uh, high school kid that he's 16 years old and wants to do this for a living. And his mother's like, he's not going to college, so he needs to find some yeah. sort of a trade. So I brought him out and it was just great to see, you know, young kids that are you know getting excited about doing carpentry type work, yeah. you know, so same for you with, you know, this guy that's going to mm-hmm. come down from Jersey and, you know, just excited about learning, you know, it, like Jimmy was saying, it's really hard to find those people right now. It's, it's so funny. Ronnie's run son, uh, Ronnie, mm-hmm. he was, he got out of high school and he worked at a gas station and he, and he learned how to change oil in cars. Two years later, he was taking Porsche engines out of cars and rebuilding them and fixing them. He did nice. that in, in motor yeah. engines. He was just so gifted and just loved doing that kind of stuff. You know, it was a troubleshooter. He was fantastic at, it, you know, but well, uh, and I, you know, as you, and I'm sure you're familiar with Mike Rowe and his big push, you know, to get young people into the trades. Yeah. So, yep. And I don't care. I'll argue. I can, I can prove it all day long. I don't, we don't, you don't need to go to college to make a really nice living. Absolutely. Um, correct. You know, it, yeah. I, I have friends that are my age still paying off college debt, you know? Yeah. Right. 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 It's crazy. Yeah. But I think I mean, part of th- it too is, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. I think a lot, a lot of it is like the mediums, like with your podcast, like getting out, reaching out to more people, but the more, energetic like when they see how you're passionate you or i are about what we do Mm -hmm. versus somebody just you know going through the motions on some tv show you know one guy does something and a crew of 20 walks in and does it yeah right Um, yeah that's right yeah we laugh at that all the time yeah i'm on a job like that right now it's quite funny (laughs) Yeah, my wife's always but like, how come you don't get it done in a week? I'm like, because I don't have 30 people waiting in the side. It's coming in. Have, have you been have you been called yet by like uh, any motion picture companies, production people to come in and have you like do stuff for their sets at all? I, not. Di- I did some stuff down for when I my student in Winter Park, Florida, which is right side of Orlando. I had a yeah. couple set painters come in or scenic painters from Universal yeah. uh, to teach them clouds. And hmm. then um, I had a I had a union painter come in for a mural class who worked out of Chicago and I was more fascinated by him and his movie background. Um, he worked on the Bat- Batman Dark Knight series. He did a couple Spider-Man movies and I'm just like, tell me your tricks. <laughs> it's, like when it a, when, it's like when a car blows through a wall, what is it? He's like, oh, it's styrofoam bricks that we cut up, put baby powder in it, sawdust in it. It's all together. It, you know, toothpicks and I'm like, you know, but I need to learn a painting technique to make it look more realistic. And I'm just like, Oh, that's, that's kind of fun stuff. You know, like for, like for Halloween, yeah. we do crazy stuff here. I so bet. we take some of those, <laughs> yeah. but not directly. No, I, I think it'd be fantastic to work on some of those sets. Yeah. There's some so, very talented people out there, but 
again, you're seeing more CGI because it's cheaper than paying a craftsman. Yeah, well, unfortunately, that's that's probably going to be true. I when I went to college, I worked with a guy by the name of Gary Jennings, <clears throat> and he was our production. He was our, I, I guess, our production coordinator, production manager. He did pro- production in theater, and I got a chance to work with him. So he did scene design. You would have loved this guy. He's still around, but he does the metropolitan art, right? He works at the Met. And nice. in, in, the, in, in college, I have to share this with you. We built a mahogany bar with the, with the sconces and everything else behind us on a Muslim uh, and um, two by, one by three and plywood. And it looked like this real mahogany, old fashioned bar. It was amazing looking. And he did like scenery, background 3D scenery and stuff like that. And I learned some of his tricks, which was really, really cool. And I got the chance to apply that recently in the past, about six or eight years ago, where friends of mine, mutual friends at Colin knows too, um, the guy retired and he got into train sets, back into his train sets. And he actually oh, yeah. had me come down. He paid me to help build his train sets. But I also made the caves where the train could go under, made mountains with, and it looked so, I got, like you, I really got into it. I was getting paid to build, de- uh-huh. I was designing stuff for a train set. I was like, man, this would be really cool if I, when I get old and crusty, I could probably do this <laughs> for making a living off the side, you know? So, so next year. So yeah, pretty much. I can pretty much do that stuff that right now. You can start at any day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I built some yeah, really, really cool stuff. You know, some of my actually I did have a buddy do he worked on the one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, and the boat was made out of styrofoam and they carved it, wood grained it, and we I sent him a recipe on how to make to crack it, meaning like if the varnish it was just falling apart in big giant chunks. Yeah. Did I lose you? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. you're right. Yep. Um, that was kind of cool. But I tell you, casinos, I've done a few of those. I love them because they let you just run wild. They kind of they'll just walk in and go, This is what I'm thinking. And you whip up some samples and it's, you know, they're just sitting there. Well, you don't care how much it costs, just make right. it amazing. That's and great. Yeah, like I oh, I've got a pool house roof to do over in uh, so I'm in just outside of Loudoun County, Virginia. <laughs> it's a tin roof and they want it to look like uh what do you call it? Old copper. Hmm. So it's about a 10,000 square foot roof. And I'll go out there hopefully next week, if the weather permits, knock that out. Wow. Sort of that copper bluey green verdigris to it. <laughs> so, so, you know, you can list some of the you know, places that you've, you've done work for, but has any of those places like the Kennedy center or any of those other ones really made you nervous? Like you were like, just kind of like, Oh my God, this is, so big i've got to nail this you ever you ever get the nerves for that yeah kennedy center was one of them because you know it's i was doing that i think that was 2007 and it they've always wanted the outside surfaces to be painted to match the marble facade but they said they could never find anybody wow and being dc i thought that was a little odd so that was kind of cool to get that first person in the history the ability to do that and then to maintain it and then um they cut my productions get time short they came out and they're like, uh, Barack Obama has a fundraiser here next week, put on by Oprah Winfrey on the, I think it was the East patio. And then the two days later, John McCain's having a fundraiser on the other patio. And like, so you need to be out of here. And I'm like, wow, great. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> and then, you know, so That's you're our like, government these- for you. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was wild. I, I've had so many people over the years come by and they go, we went down to the Kennedy center looking to see what you did. And we, we didn't see anything. And I'm like, good. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Idea. Yep. <laughs> I did have a gentleman that called me. I actually was working with his wife. Um, they were here when president Obama was the president and he was part of the legal team. And I, they gave me a bunch of doors to wood grain for my house, not too far from here that were originally painted in curly maple, took like curly maple, mm. about 1820. Um, and they wanted me just to redo the doors because the dog scratched them all up. And I didn't, I didn't want to redo or erase somebody's handwork. So we, I, I just went in and patched in where the dog scratched it and base coated it here and there. 
grained it to match what the original painter did and actually took pigmented waxes to it simulate the buildup of wax and dirt over the year. Yeah. So I go to deliver the door and, and the husband's there who I've never met before and he introduces himself. And you ever sit in a room and you're looking at somebody like, man, I know this guy. Mm-hmm. I've seen him before. And then he hands me his business card and I'm like, oh, oh, that's your real name, not your nickname. And I was like, hey, he's like, hey, why? I was like, I wish I would have known this because, you know, uh, if, you, if I did a bad job on your door and knowing that you work with the president on a daily basis and you were upset because this painter screwed up your door, I could have been like, yeah. who knows? <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but that, yeah, it's kind of cool because a lot of times I really don't know some of the people I work for and yeah. I never... I don't background check them. Yeah, it's just kind of fun. Yeah. yeah I've, it's kind of cool. It's it's neat. Like a lot of uh, football players in the area, a lot of you know, sports players and politicians. It, it's fun. It's really cool. Nice. You know, that's really good because what you do and you enjoy your work and they're excited for your work because they already know your work. So it's like it's one big happy family. So it's it's a big reveal when you finish it to both of you. Like, yeah, look at this. Wow. Just, it's amazing to hear that. Yeah, a little beeswax here, a little that, yeah. a little this, you know, and then I put a little this yeah. in here and then boom, you know, there it is. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, like if I would have, it's a, kind of a mess in here right now, but if you saw my shelves, it looks more like a, a science, mad scientist lab. Because I mean, sure. once I understand the basic chemicals and the properties of the materials that I'm playing with and how they work with other things, then I start to break the rules a little bit. And as they work, we come up with fun, different things. Because a lot of the things that were done back in, you know, 40 years and not even 40, 15, 20 years ago prior, all oil base when it comes oh, to the right. and Yeah. Now right. everything's acrylic. So you've got to make acrylic look like the original oils when we're doing touch ups. But wow. that's wow. just fun to me. Yeah. So that's all trial and error to you, right? You just you you just tried everything to see what would make it work you did your own a lot site. of time yeah i mean you figure back then though and like we you'll buy like the glaze that we have here that we sell through the studio is acrylic but if you need to make it you just get yourself some turpentine some linseed oil some japan dryer um what's the other ingredient japan it's four main ingredients paint dinner linseed oil japan dryer and i can't with the fourth one also off the top of alcohol I, acetone do you need alcohol? No, acetone? it dries too fast. Yeah. Uh, mm. We'll put because with your turpentine and your linseed oil, uh, that won't dry. So that's why you put a little bit of Japan dryers in it, which is the name of the product. Um, it's, I mean, a little drop, drop in oil based paint can make it dry like that. And you just get some pigments and go at it. Like I was on a job down in uh, the Bahamas and I couldn't find anything that I needed because everything I shipped down just never made it. Uh. So we went to the local printing place and got ink and to the paint store and just got like, what do you call it? Clear base paint and some, is it uh, mineral oil, mineral oil, crippling mm. glycol. Okay. And you mix the mineral oil in there. That'll slow down the dry time of the paint and the, the pigments or the ink from printing. And here we are, we're painting doors like mahogany. Wow. Just having a good time. He's like a little MacGyver too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jim, we're going to have a guest on today, and he's going to make you feel really stupid. <laughs> but I just, I, I just, uh, you're just a genius, dude. You're just yeah. like, you're amazing. No, dude, there's, there's, I, I just do, I, I've been around and I pay attention. I, I learned at a young age and, you know, it was uh, keep your mouth shut, your eyes and your ears open. And a lot of times it was my dad hit me in the back of the head, you know, <laughs> shut up, pay attention. Uh-huh. And you just learn. And then I've got lucky to meet a lot of friends, make a lot of friends in the industry, uh, throughout france italy holland and those guys there's i mean the talent is out, we all know yeah. the talent is out there is amazing yeah and just when you watch them do their thing and if i take like five percent of one of their little tips or tricks bring it into what i do it just gives me a better finish it's fun nice the material is a lot different than what we have in the united states isn't it or is it based is it, it are the compounds basically the same as ours it's when it better comes to- <laughs> It's better. All right. Cause yeah, it's yeah. much better. Yeah. I mean, you can get like kind paint from Germany and put it on the outside of a building and it won't fade for 40 years. Like wow. 40 years later, you can literally go touch it up. We'll use that for exterior murals. And then people are like, it will fade. It doesn't fade. It's a hundred percent mineral product. Hmm. Um, when I was in Holland, I was in uh, the town of Utrecht for a, a show 
and it was a, there was a painting school there that hosted called Nemento. It wasn't a painting school, it was a trade school. And I mean, when you learn to paint exteriors, first thing they start teaching you is how to strip the paint down, remove the glaze, you know, put the points back in the windows, reglaze the windows, prime, split coat. And they're still using oil-based paints to today, today that meet and exceed all of US VOC standards. Really? Wow. It's Why oh is yeah, that? fine paint. Because we get it's called fine sh- paints of Europe. Oh my god. Yeah, Beautiful. I've heard of that. Yes, I've heard of that. I've heard of that. Uh, stuff. And when you call them and talk to them, they are very knowledgeable. But yeah, it's great pain. Oh I mean, the wallpaper classroom, you go down the wallpaper room, they teach you how to strip the wallpaper off, prep the walls, and then properly install wallpaper. Hmm. Such oh. a cool place. So wow. I'm using vinegar right now. I just like did this whole, oh my God, I've been, that's Colin. That's what I've been doing for the past two weeks, yep. stripping walls and wallpaper. <laughs> yep. and, and now I find out that the woman that I stripped the wallpaper from mm-hmm. and I'm skim coating the wall, mm-hmm. she's going to re, re, re wallpaper the wall. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I would have <laughs> tore all that. I would have tore it all off yeah. with a new sheetrock. Right. Now she, oh my God. <laughs> Tell her about putting the pressure on. Yeah. I'm going to re wallpaper. No, you're not. Yeah. That's, but, that's an art too. So I have to say, I, I travel too. I tried, well, I did before COVID. I try to travel the world and I've been places and I've been to Ireland for the third time. But now that I'm older, I went, I have to say, we went during the summer of Ireland, which is basically the equinox of three weeks. That's what they have. <laughs> and like that, the, the, the heat season is like 72 degrees. And they're like, wow, they're on shorts and sandals and they're running around <laughs> trying to get color on their white skin. Yeah. <laughs> but they're freaking painting these buildings outside. And I'm like, dude, it's going to rain in like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to have a sun. that's going to rain again. So, that brought my attention. I can bring this up with you. I said, they got to be using something different that they can paint houses because our stuff would never hold up, never hold up to the, the conditions out there in Ireland, you know, in that. Uh, in well, that I, I think that, and manufacturers here are going to hate me for saying this, but they don't want their paints the last 10 exactly. to 20 years because exactly. there's, you know, exactly. there's no money in that, but mm-hmm. Over there, I mean, you can, when I was, I've been, to, I, I travel a lot. Like I'll be teaching a wood graining class in Ireland in February. And then I'm doing a plaster class in Australia. I think in July, I do a class in Japan. Jeez. And then I'll spend, oh. the, then I'll be teaching in Italy for a month. Oh, but really? part of it is I like, oh yeah. yeah. Why don't you try to get down um, to South Korea? See how well that goes. I <laughs> think. <laughs> <laughs> My dad, I, he, I, I had a chance to go to Vietnam to, to, to do some stuff, and I talked to my father about it. Yeah, and he's like, I never talk, I never talk to you again if you go to Vietnam. I'm like, all right. Yeah, <laughs> um, I went to yeah. Vietnam. I was in Vietnam uh, four years ago, and I have to say, tell your dad. I mean, I was actually there with um, some veterans who have actually gone back a couple of times who who fought in Nam, and it was a very healing experience. And you can share this with your dad too, and tell you that it is it is no longer there is like when you when you go to vietnam it is like the hand will come out to to shake your hand and to offer you something it's very very peaceful um they they're glad it's over um and it's nothing but love over there believe me it really is um there's a lot that goes on between the people from vietnam it's just like why did we kill each other you know, why did we do this? We're not that we yeah. really shouldn't have had, we shouldn't have gone. A buddy way. of mine, was, a buddy of mine spent a month there. He's a, uh, I think he's just traveling the world now. He's done pretty good for himself. Yeah. He, he was just like, it's beautiful. The people are, he's like, I can't, there's nothing bad to say about the place. No. And it but, would be very healing for your dad. I know I'm sure he carries a lot. I'm, I've met quite a few veterans from Vietnam and stuff like that. And it's, and it's a struggle, but, um, uh, it would be, it would be healing for him if he went, it really would be. Yeah. I, it's, I just enjoy traveling and architecture blows my mind. Like when I travel, everybody thinks I'm nuts. I'm always touching the surfaces, looking at the buildings. <laughs> yeah. Man. I was in the Louvre. God, when I went to Paris, I think I was in the Louvre for about five and a half hours easy. Wow. And I, I walked out, it was sensory overload. It was like, I literally couldn't take any more, but I have a friend that works on the board of conservators over there. People are looking, you know, the, the jewelry and the all these the furniture, and I'm like, yeah, that's that's my buddy's handiwork right there. Oh, that's not real marble; that's painted. Wow. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, because back then that was the thing. Like the castles, the museums, real marble was pretty much from 
six to eight feet down because that's what you can touch. And then everything above, they would paint it because it would save on costs. Yeah. Uh, the, the, how to build a structure to hold a lot of marble, the weight of the marble. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Very, very heavy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you, when the, you know, plaster techniques have been around for, I mean, my gosh, plaster goes back to the ancient Egyptians when the pyramids were covered in white lines. So it was like a diamond shining in a desert. And it would yeah. burnish it so it, it would polish. And it became famous in Venice because then we started manipulating it to look like marble. Mm hmm. And then you have guys now that, I mean, it's, oh my God. Then you got the Scagliola, which when you see these big, beautiful columns, they take lime plaster putty and they mold it with their hands and they put it in different positions. And they'll actually take silk, dip it in pigment, and string the silk out and they stretch it out on the surface, scrape it, trowel it. You can't tell that you're not looking at real marble columns. Wow. And these giant columns that you see in museums are 90% of the time are Scagliola. And you know that? And, and you walk in, Scagliola, Scagliola, Scagliola. Can you do that? Yeah. Is that what you do? You're like the detective. Oh, I, hey. I, I, I geek out. I walk up to it and tap it. I'm like, they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, it's a fake column. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. So, but that's, a, that, that's really becoming a lost art. I only know of three or four people uh, that do that in, in Rome. And they, I mean, they can name their price and their work is absolutely st astonishing. Really wow. nice. So can I ask you this? Cause since you're, since you know all this, um, when I was in Morocco, I went to the, I went to a place where they had the ruins, uh, Roman, Roman ruins there. And I was looking at some of the columns that were on the ground and I'm looking at the, the fluted, the fluted spots, like the, the, uh, the concaved fluted mm -hmm. uh, lines. So they were, they, the Romans back then learned how to plaster. Is that what they did? They learned how to plaster way back before Christ. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, even in, when you were in Morocco, most of you probably noticed a lot that plaster is everywhere in Morocco. Yeah, it is. It's, it's stone. Yeah. Tadillac, it's called Tadillac. It's a technique using their plasters. It's absolutely gorgeous. And mm -hmm. I was trying to get the customer I'm working for on this house. He's got all this tile going. And I'm like, ah, we could have done that in Tadillac. We'll really pretty and he's like what i showed him the sample i was like oh yeah you can put it in your bathtub you can put it in your shower it's water resistant he's like no i showed him a sample stuck in a bucket of water pulled it out the next day no damage to it at all wow. why, can't huh. we do, why don't we do stuff like this why why don't we do stuff like this are we just he so does. conditioned well he does <laughs> right. one one in millions yeah. you know why but can't why I can't we when you look well, when you look back then, material costs were so high to mine them and to transport them, and your labor costs were so low. Now it's flipped. We can get uh, the countertop guys talking to him the other day. He got a slab of some kind of granite from Vietnam for 500 bucks. He's Jesus. like, if I have to fit in the United States, it's twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our labor has gone through the roof, but we can get our material costs down and like, you know, but also I think people, you know, it, it drives me nuts in a way because I have customers that like. They'll have a 24,000 wristwatch or a quarter million dollar car in the driveway. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, can we just paint it? Will it look the same? And I'm like, <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> we have those yeah. two yeah. Priorities. <laughs> priorities. We have those two. But, and I think a lot of it, though, it's such a, it's, it is kind of a lost craft that you don't see many people doing it that they don't even know it's out there anymore. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. Oh, yeah. No, I don't agree. Honestly, yeah. And, and one of my best buddies uh, from Las Vegas, he's done some magnificent work and companies out there. Like if you've been to the forum shops at Caesars Palace mm -hmm. and you see these big giant flat, the columns are plaster. Some are painted like marble. You got the beautiful sky murals. And unfortunately, people don't even realize what they're looking at. They just go in there looking for that slot machine like a zombie. And right. it's like, do you right. not see everything around you? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I feel like it yeah, is because I, I go into Caesars when I was out in Vegas, you know, earlier this summer i didn't even pay attention to it either. really yeah you know it's it's funny you, you you kind of expect the columns you expect the marble but you don't really know that it's all fake i mean that's that's when i when i first went on ron's website and i saw the stuff that he does with marbling i was like huh i didn't know anybody did that mm. didn't right. even know never even occurred to me i just figured yeah it's yeah <laughs> It's, been... it's, a, it's just why it's a shame that like when they built uh, the Venetian and mm -hmm. um, when was, uh, Mr. Adelson, 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 I believe is how you pronounce his name. He was sending people over to Italy. And if you recreated a column out of cement and it didn't look like the original column in Italy, mm -hmm. tear it down, do it again. 
he ex- expected nothing less than perfection. Wow. But he, and he paid for it too. He's like, there was, you know, if I don't, he was one of those guys, I don't care what I have to pay, but it better be exactly like it should be. And mm-hmm. it better be the best thing we're ever going to see in this country. Yeah. You, and there's, I mean, there's some, you're, yeah, there's, it's cool. Have you been to, um, have you been to, have you done any work in Germany? Not yet. I cannot wait to get to Germany. I'm dying. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of, um, well, you know, a lot of it's modern. There's a, there's some really great modern art that I've seen out there. Um, some of the original architecture is still around um, that I, you get to see bits and pieces of it. And I think I can't remember. I, it was in. I think I was in Berlin and they had part of the railroad station that was left. It's part of a monument, uh, but that's where they would um, where they would send the, you know, the Jews to the camps at this um, at this railroad station. And uh, but the architecture in that building, what's left of it is absolutely magnificent. And mm-hmm. I know when you see it, if you go and you see it, you're going to be like, wow, you know, there's some really great ornate moldings and stuff like that up there that, I've, that, that you see. So I was thinking of you while you were talking about going to Italy and stuff like that. That definitely is. That's on my list. I got to get to uh, what is it? Um, is it Prague where all the palaces are? Yes. Can, it's over, you know, whatever that part of what that world is called nowadays, mm-hmm. former Soviet, but those like the winter palace and just some of those buildings, the architecture, like the, the Malachite room in the winter palace. I look at that on a 360 on the website and mm-hmm. it just blows my mind all real Malachite. It's unbelievable. Um, because a lot of times I will spend hours behind a computer going to the uh, library anywhere I can, like find pictures of real things to recreate. Like the one client I have, she's absolutely amazing. She took a house in less than three years. It was 18,000 square feet. Had no, it was a mess. There was trees like two foot in diameter coming out of the second floor. Jesus. No. Oh, she dropped more money. You can, it's insane, but she's turned it into, she's re, rebuilt it. It's a palace. It really is a palace. And she, we got in there. I was wood graining doors like Italian walnut. And she wanted this blood red, like ox blood red Venetian plaster, which is true Venetian plaster is lime. They call it polished lime. And you put it on the wall and you burnish it. You get it really hot. It just shines and glows. You can see yourself in it. Wow. We did that. And then, um, gosh, like downstairs, somebody broke one of the capitals off the crimp team capital. And one of my guys that I call once in a while, I was like, can you fix that? Because like, that's, that's out. I don't skull. That's not. He goes, yeah. He's like, what do you need? He's like, got my tools in the car. He ran out, got his compasses, got some molding plaster, put it up there. Did his, his work and 20 minutes later, you couldn't tell the difference. Wow. But then yeah. for her, I did some malachite, faux malachite uh, on her pillars in the billiards room. And that was like, I've always done malachite in a classroom or a flat surface, but to do a column, that just blows your mind. And when people sure. walk in, they're just like, they don't know. They just look at it like, wow, that's because she has a malachite uh, chest board right there, a real one. <laughs> and I was, the beauty is when I walk in, I'm like, nailed it exactly <laughs> it just wow. makes me feel great absolutely great, man. so tell us a little bit about your school so yeah i started uh, i don't even know when i started teaching classes it's been a while but anyway yeah i teach classes in maryland from oh, there you did go. I lose yep. You? Oh, yep sorry You're back. that's right um uh, i teach classes pretty much in maryland in the warm time of year because we have very erratic winters mm-hmm. um but i do classes one day three day and five day uh, one day are designed to kind of get your feet wet, see if you like it before you make an investment of time and money to go into something to find out maybe you really don't want to do with that. Mm-hmm. But I'll do like a single day plaster, Italian plaster class, a single day wood graining, a single day marble. And then um, I, I have more. So if you like the one day, you take the three day and it just builds upon. Like in my one day, I'll teach uh, behind me here. I don't even know I, what I've got. Like one day marble class, I'll learn like that Sienna Brocatelli um you got to go up see it but then you have the vert de Mir, the rojo alicante and then i think that's the carrara so i'll teach that in a three-day advance uh my morning called it advanced but a beginner class because it's you've got to understand how it's created in the earth to mm-hmm. recreate it on with paint yeah. and plaster wow. and then from there they, they keep expanding wow so and how do you have time for but yeah really there's no life <laughs> this is his life 
I, mean, wow. no, I, I don't. As soon as I finish here, I got to go. I go to the gym and train with my trainer and I'll go back and work tonight in another place because nobody's there and it's quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh that's God. amazing. Wow. I got to go back in. I got to go lift some Malachite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so See, when you, if you don't work, so when you teach people just, this, this technique, uh, is it, is it kind of like, you know, did, I, I know you're, I, I don't want to put this. So you're basically teaching, you know, skills and secrets and things like that to, to people. And you're okay with that. You know, you're okay giving up the secrets and, and all that. Yeah. Cause if you don't, the, the, they won't go anywhere. Right. Lost you know, art. Like, you know, like when you figure we had, was it, you know, World War One and a lot of the old time painters went and fought the war. Same with World War Two, And a lot of them didn't come back. And then a lot of the painting, decorative painting disappeared. And it really didn't start making a resurgence to the end of the 80s or till the 80s. Mm. And you had women getting involved at that point, doing, you know, rag rolling and mm -hmm. you know, a little stenciling here and there and some other stuff. And it really never came back in this country. Mm. Um, got like I, I was supposed to be in Japan earlier this year, but it was coincided with the Olympics and they canceled the trip due to COVID. Mm -hmm. I was going to go learn traditional Japanese plaster techniques, and some of those go back to the sixth century. <laughs> and it's the oldest school in Japan. They didn't start teaching women until maybe about 10, 15 years ago. Wow. It was a man's industry. And they only had at one point at the height, Japan over 300,000 plaster applicators today they're down to less than 30,000 wow wow and you know it's like you yeah, teach them you know and some people are going to get it and run with it and keep going some people will do it well you know it's like anything else you know they'll do it at a certain level another level and everybody's like well you're going to teach your competition hey <laughs> i don't mind yes yeah, so right you're, you're you know, not like my i remember when i was younger my grandmother used to make these great cookies and she'd give out the recipe, but she always held back one part of the recipe, one ingredient, so it could never be as good. You do that, Rob? I hate your grandmother. <laughs> uh, I don't do that, but I, I love red velvet cake. And the yeah. lady that used to, an old family friend, we can't find the recipe because nobody, it's like, if, if we could make it today just as good as she did, we wouldn't have this wonderful memory. You know, right. it's like, yeah, exactly. now I'm on exactly. the hunt to find that red velvet cake. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. No, I, I mean, when I, yeah, my classes, and actually I've really expanded upon it. Um, I'm teaching at the National Convention in January. There's a, It's called the International Decorative Artisans League. They go by IDAL. And they have a national convention every year. I'm lucky enough to be, they asked me to do two classes. So I'm cool. taking all my, my notes were always handwritten. And I've done this stuff on YouTube. So now what I'm doing is making more comprehensive videos and step-by-step -step photos with my notes. So you people can recreate it all the, at any time they need to and try to, and then refer back to the videos for inspiration and actually see the, some, cause you're, it's all a lot of time about how your hand moves, a lot of technique. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, the more people I can get out there and like, dude, I, 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 my buddy's always, he, he's a YouTube geek and he's like, oh, that video got a quarter million views. And I'm like, he cares about that. I'm like a quarter million people were interested in what I had to show them. Yeah. I don't care about for the number or the volume. But it's like they and I get when people send like there's a I can't remember where he's from. He's been following me on YouTube for a while. He sent me a note. I think he was out of Florida. He's 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 like, I want to thank you. I built my business off of your YouTube videos. Wow. He's like, I just moved into a 4000 square foot shop and I have 12 employees. Wow. That makes you feel good. Just yeah. following good job, buddy. Great job. Great yeah. Job. Yeah. And that's worth it right there. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. All right. So people that want to find you. How do they find you? Go to go to Italy. To find them in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> I know they have to act quick uh, if they want to see you, but because yeah. you're always you're always the on Italy the move. Class. Yeah. Well, I do the Italy class. It's very old school. We go to the quarries. We actually go to Mazzacarra, see where the marbles quarry. Then we'll go to the factory, tour the factory, the process, and then buildings. Look at them and recreate those finishes. Um, but right now, everything's going on RonaldLayman.com. RonaldLayman.com. Okay, and you also yeah. have a traditional polished Venetian plaster instructional DVD available? Uh, that's the only one listed on the website. They're redoing the website. There's actually okay. about 50 DVDs available right now. Oh, nice. Great. So, yeah. If they go to the website, shoot me an email or call the studio, we'll send them a whole breakdown. Every marble panel behind me, there's an instructional DVD. Oh, great. Uh, pretty much. Every, yeah, there's a lot. That's great. Good for you. Good for you. 
You are an amazing, talented individual. And yes, I am so happy that I got to meet you yeah, today. Yeah, a pleasure and, to talk to you too. Yeah, and our guest. Yeah, I appreciate hear what it. You have to Thank say. you. Oh my God. You're welcome. Yeah. So yeah, definitely go uh, take a look at this guy's stuff. I mean, if we haven't gotten you excited about it from the show, I don't know what else to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, learn, I'm, learn to keep the plaster alive. I'm defeated. I'm just so defeated. <laughs> it, it, it died with Jimmy and I, but maybe it'll live with you out there. <laughs> I, I can't hang up a crown molding to save my life. I can never cut her. All right. Drives me nuts. All right. That's... Oh, I've got all the tools in the world. I can't hang a piece of crown. <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't worry. You can afford you, people. To you do have that. to yeah. start with trying to nail a bar of soap to a windowsill. That's your first. <laughs> Try that first, and then we'll we'll, we'll yeah. advance you from there. <laughs> then you have hope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rod, thanks again, man. We really appreciate you joining us. Thanks, buddy. Thank you very much. It was, it was, I'm really happy you reached out to ask me to do this. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you. Any time to come back, really. Thank you. And everybody I'd out love there. To. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so everybody out there, thank you very much for listening. We appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, we're going to see you next week. Good Lord willing in the creek. Don't rise. There you go. All right. All right thanks, everyone. See ya. See ya.